Hello everybody, my name is Eetu, as you probably heard. I'm here to talk about Clojure as first professional language in Sealy and in our junior program. Uh, you can find me on Twitter with the handle Eetu Seta, without the umlauts. Uh, could you turn down the monitor a bit, it's going to start. Thanks. Um, who am I? Uh, this is me and Stuart, and what I do is I'm head of .core at Sealy Solutions. We focus on closure. We try to do all of our projects with closure or closure script involved. We do, of course, other things also. And we are trying to be agile. Things I like, I like to play ice hockey. You can catch me at Nordis every Monday and Tuesday morning, unless there are some horse shows or Metallica playing. Uh, I try to play guitar, and that's not going that well, as you can see. I'm here speaking and not on a world tour. And I also like cooking, as you might notice from my appearance. So how did we get here? Uh, my career at Sealy started uh, almost four years ago. I moved to Helsinki because of a girl. And I was supposed to get a job at HiQ. I didn't. Uh, but what I got was a tip from a friend, Jani, who said that Sealy is starting a junior program and I should apply. And I did. And in some quick glance of madness, they went on and hired me. That would be 2016. Um, what I learned in our first junior program is that our director of technology, Werner, is super fast, and you have to listen to careful, really carefully what he's saying. Otherwise, you're going to miss half of it. What I also learned was some closure, closure script, Docker, and all these cool new stuff, which is kind of nice because what I've been doing at school was Java. And I kind of sucked at it. So this was a happy change. Um, what happened since then was that this program was quite successful. There was 20 of us at the first set. After that came a little bit smaller, like 10 people, and so on and so on. Every half years, we try to surprisingly start when the universities end their semester. So when people are graduating and searching for new jobs, we're trying to get the fresh developers to join our junior program. And because we use Clojure. This talk is held here. Our main focus is in Clojure, and the reason why is because most of the schools in Finland uh, don't embrace the functional programming. There are exceptions, and it's, it's rising in Aalto Yliopisto, also in University of Tampere, formerly known as Technological University of Tampere. And also some, some other universities have been lifting up the functional programming. But the philosophy is that when everyone starts, they have some kind of experience. Is it from school? They might have been working for a year or two somewhere doing some coding. And they've learned habits. And well, they might be good habits, but they might also have some not so good programming habits. Closure tends to force people to write code in a smart way. So you learn to do that. But also you learn the philosophy of how to write code, how to understand code, how to have a new perspective of programming. 
uh, Clojure is heavily focused on, on math and functional programming because of the basic element of function. And it, it kind of makes you do things in orderly fashion. You have to have your things in order. And the most important thing that we're trying to teach in the Master and Apprentice program is to learn new things and unlearn the bad habits of programming that you have might caught up in, in your previous adventures. Um, that's pretty hard. You, you, might, you might have heard that if you start something new, you have to do uh, 1,000 repetitions to get away with the old and 10,000 to actually embrace the new one. And the time for that would be eight weeks in our junior program. That's some heavy stuff. First two weeks, we're going to cycle them around the office and show all the important HR stuff where you book your hours and where you can go when you get sick and so on and so on. So that leaves six weeks of hardcore programming. And of course, we have to keep in mind that we're in Finland and you work seven and a half hours a day, period. That's, that's the limit. And within these six weeks, we're building a team or two teams of junior closure developers with, uh, with a master and apprentice approach. So we'll have some more senior people to look after them and help them decode at least five of them are here today, so you can chat with them. They're wearing probably black silly hoodies or orange silly hoodies if, you, if you're interested. It has been proven that it works. Otherwise, we would have stopped it two years ago, three years ago. Um, There are two success stories that I want to share with you. There are multiple crash and burns that I'm not going to share with you because I'll, let's talk at the after party. This one goes on YouTube and I don't want to embarrass our company. Um, but there's the first crash and burn at the first, first row. You might have seen it sometime. But the success stories that we have, uh, the Master and Apprentice program has produced one uh, MVP to outside company called House of Learning. Uh, it's an e-learning platform that we created. Uh, we did the design, we did the coding, and I think it's alive and well. I haven't checked later, but at least six, mon six months ago they were still alive and well, and we're trying to help some ground schools to digitalize their learning platforms. And also because a happy employee is the most productive employee, there's also a tool called Sealy Feelis, which is in our Slack, and it measures our employees' happiness every month. You you don't have to do anything else to, to answer to the bot and tell you, tell what's going on, you're happy or not. We've, uh, how should I put it? We've squeezed almost 100 junior developers through this program. So we now have the capability to actually 
build teams that focus on closure with our seniors and our juniors. And that's, that's a lot of programmers. Of course, everyone, everyone understands that not every project is written in closure. Everyone in here is wondering why not, but that's not our decision. Um, what are the next steps? After you start using closure, it's not certain that you're going to do closure for your next project. But that's not going to be a problem. What we're trying to do is we're trying to give the people the tools, the software craftsmanship tools that they can build on. And even though in our company at least, uh, Java is one of the biggest languages that customers tend to want. Learning Clojure makes you also a better Java programmer. And that is the, sometimes the next step. Other one is the next step of me doing some crazy stuff and starting my own small business in this focus to enclosure. So there are multiple ways to handle this. Uh, but the next steps that we're going to do with this is that we have already contacted a few universities and tried to uh, talk with them if we could create a massive online course for their students. That's, an, that's a long shot but that's worth of a try in my world. Um, we are opening up uh, next junior program probably in the beginning of January. Don't hold me to that. I'm not certain about how things are going and what's going on, but we're trying to bring people to the closure community. And of course, we're trying to widen the Finnish and European closure community by extending our knowledge and coders to all around Europe and of course Northern America, Southern America, Africa, Asia, maybe even in Australia, even though they're upside down. But yeah. That's how we see the future of junior developers in Finland, Helsinki, Sealy. And what I'm, what I'm saying is that we pulled off it pretty nicely. There's, uh, I would say there's at least 10 or 15 people from the Sealy Junior program attending today. And they are working with various customers. Yle, the Finnish pro broadcasting company, uh, one, of the, one of the high profile houses in Finland with closure. With, they're working with Keva. They're working with, uh, with Väylä Virasto, which is the office of transportation in Finland. We're doing some pretty cool stuff with uh, digitalization there also. I have one minute left of my talk time and then there's five minute Q&A. That was my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be at the stand. Uh, I have no idea how much beer left from yesterday, but I think there's some beer. Come and check me out. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, 
So I think one year ago, um, my wife uh, applied to that master and apprentice program. And she got the answer that uh, it's only for Finnish speaking. So she asked this morning also uh, to me to ask uh, if I meet silly <coughs> guys, if that's changed or is it still for only Finnish speakers? Um, it's 2019 <laughs> and we should be able to hire also non-Finnish speakers. Uh, fluent English is preferred. Also, we might handle that in Sweden, Swedish and, and I think Yves is fluent at French. Um, but as I said, we are trying to grow internationally in, in Europe and also in, in Finland. And to my regret, even in 2019, most of Finnish companies tend to be scared of non-Finnish speaking developers. But if uh, we focus on quality and we don't care about the, the language that people speak, as long as we can understand them. So uh, this is not the official answer of the, of the company, but if you ask me, I see no problem in hiring English-speaking professionals in the future. Thanks. Um, what do you think are the most important things um, when starting the program in Clojure? Most important things. Open the REPL, live in there, uh, talk to the senior guys, try to get hold of the documentation. And if you have any chances to improve the documentation, you might want to do that. Uh, also, uh, dare to try. You, you have to dare and try and make mistakes to learn. You, you cannot do learning without failing. And when you fail, you learn. Of course, when you succeed, you learn. But those are, those are my two cents on that. There's still one more. And we have one minute left. Thank you. It was really inspiring to hear this story. Could you maybe tell a bit more about what is difficult for people to learn in your experience? Uh, what is difficult to learn? Um, the most difficult thing to learn is to switch your mindset from the old, uh, maybe object-oriented or other uh, paradigm to the functional paradigm. When, when it clicks, it usually helps and people start to improve. Uh, that's, that's one of the hardest things. Of course, uh, the different way of writing closure, uh, well, give you an example of Java. How you, how they differ is is one of the hardest things that people have to get their head around. So that that would probably the, be the most difficult thing. Closure is very compact language, so you can you can really learn it really fast when when your mindset is in the right place. <laughs> 